Mom, Dad, I humbly suggest you save some money and shop Amazon for back to school. It's for my growth, meaning my body's growing at an alarming rate. And clothes you buy me this year will be very small very soon. Plus, the clothes I love today will be out of style tomorrow. But at least your wallet doesn't have to be my fashion victim if you shop low prices for school at Amazon. Hopefully this is helpful. Amazon. Spend less, smile more. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Today we're going to talk about when your wife lets the kids treat her poorly and your thoughts about that, you know, and how to be a better man because you actually help instead of piling on and literally treating her badly about the kids treating her badly. Um, Before we get to that, I will tell you to subscribe. Most recent subscriber episode, I don't remember, but there is one on oral sex, so awesome. And subscribe, and you'll get that one and all the other ones. Anyway, um, so a lot of guys are very impatient and frustrated when their wives, quote, let the kids treat them badly. And they feel that the wife is not assertive enough, and therefore uh, this happens. And if the wife just had more boundaries and was a better disciplinarian, then the children would be better with her. And, um, and, And then, to compound this, some men say that when they try to intervene, the wife doesn't like that they're mean to the kids, so therefore they can't even do anything. Well, that's bullshit. Whenever anybody says they can't even do anything, then that's not true, of course. Where there is life, there is hope. And the I, the odds that you have thought of every possible way to resolve a situation are nil because you are just one person and you see things through the lens that you were raised to see them in. A lot of men, by the way, in this situation came from homes where discipline was pretty uh, harsh and they never would have talked to, they they think they never would have talked to their parent like that because um, of, they would be scared to, you know, and some people wouldn't have talked to their parent like that because they were raised in a home where nobody ever uh, was able to assert needs or for anything. So a child never would have asked really for anything at all. And that's really not much better. Um, and that's why, you know, you may be in an unhappy marriage, right? Because you don't really deserve, think you deserve anything better. But that is obviously for different podcasts. The point here is, of course, so, okay, so let's do an example. People like examples. So you walk in from a day of work and you see your wife is at the kitchen table and she's trying to do homework with your son and your son, sons always trigger the father. I didn't say a girl on purpose because... Uh, Men are triggered by boys like women are triggered by girls because you identify with them. And your son, who's in the third grade, your wife is trying to do the math homework with him. And he says, this is stupid. I hate this. I'm not going to do it. And that's what you walk into as soon as you open the door. And you hear your wife's placating tone. Oh, okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. And then he says, you are stupid for making me do this stupid thing, right? I'm just making him like a total dick, your son, in this situation. Most kids do not talk like that. But anyway, so let's say he does. And then you feel your blood boil. And then you come in and you say, you don't talk to your mother like that. What the hell's wrong? What's going on here? And then, of course, without any hint of irony, you turn to her often and you say, why do you let him talk like that to you for? My God, there's nothing. What if I didn't even come home? This is how he talks to you all day. I mean, it's funny when I say it like that, right? Because why is he learning to be an asshole? Your son. Oh, I guess because you're an asshole. You know, it's like super perfect in my example. But in many examples, people don't realize that until, you know, a lot of money is spent in therapy. But anyway, so you talk down to her. So the first thing to realize is you got to stop talking down to your wife because you talk down to her. That's why he talks down to her. Because she's a non-person. You treat her like a non-person. He treats her like a non-person. You're like, how could I be trying to have sex with a non-person all the time? Well, did you ever see the movie Lars and the Real Doll? Um, (laughs) You you don't need to respect your wife to have sex with her and to want to have sex with her. And you may not respect her. Think about it. Do you respect her? She lets the kids treat her like shit from your estimation. And honestly, she probably lets you talk to her pretty bad too. How could you respect such a person? Has nothing to do with whether you love her. But you see her as kind of a beaten dog type of person, probably somewhat pathetic, and uh, it makes you uncomfortable. And that's why you turn on her like that. Probably your own mother was like the same thing. 
or your father. One of them was treated like shit by the other one. One of them was a very passive, passive person. So the passivity triggers you a lot. So what's a different way to do this? Definitely, you could say to your son, you don't talk to your mother like that. But what about focus on the positives of it too? You know how patient mom is to sit with you? I can never sit with you, especially when you're like being rude. I would never be able to sit with you and have the patience to sit with you and do this homework. You know how much mommy loves you? Wow. I wish somebody would have sat with me like that when I was little. Maybe I'd be better at at English right now if somebody would have sat with me and done my reading like how mom sits with you and does the reading. And then you say to your son, your mother is a more sensitive person. She's very nice and very kind and very loving. She's also more sensitive. You have to be nicer to her. You can't speak to her like that. The reason that she has so much patience and kindness with you is because she is a sensitive, loving, devoted person. And that's why she doesn't yell back at you also, by the way, like how I would. And there's good parts of being a warm, kind person like mom. For example, you have somebody that sits there and cares about whether you get your homework done. Whereas if you would speak to me like that, I would not sit with you anymore. So there are benefits to how mommy is, and you're not going to talk to her like that. You treat her with kindness, and you treat her with respect, and you treat her with love. She loves you so much. Don't you see how much she loves you every day? She does all these wonderful things for you. Look at all the things she does for you. These are things I don't have the patience to do. Mom is a great mother. You treat her like a great mother. So there you go. There's your script. So you could write that all down. I'm now talking to you again in the podcast. I'm not pretending anymore. And you write down and you say some of that. And that changes the frame. Because when you come in, and a lot of guys don't even realize they do this until it's pointed out to them, until I ask about the reality of how the conversation goes, is basically they reprimand the kid for talking to mom like that. And then they turn around and they reprimand mom (laughs) for being talked to like that. And there's no benefit, there's no sweetness, there's no appreciation, there's no love. So how the hell, why do you think the boy treats his mother like that? Because he sees his father treat his mother like that. That is the truth. And it it could be a very big eye-opener to understand that you do not treat your wife with uh, deference and love the way that you may think that you do. Because kids do not get um, behaviors out of nowhere. They are modeling what they see at home. When there is a lot of conflict and tension in the home, then there is more tension and conflict between siblings. Of course, there's certain inflection points, such as when kids turn into toddlers or they turn into teenagers, where there are big changes in them and they push boundaries. But there is still a range of ways that they can act. And if they see disrespect modeled in their home, then they already know how to be disrespectful. So they're going to act worse when they are halt, hungry, anxious, lonely, tired. By the way, that halt acronym is one that is used in substance use when uh, we're trying to say what could predispose you to have a relapse. You got to watch out when you're hungry, uh, anxious, lonely, tired. Halt. It's a good acronym to teach your children. Uh, That's when people act out. That's when people do things that they are later ashamed of is when they're dysregulated in those ways. And that's when they're more predisposed to engage in their dysfunctional behaviors. Yours may be, by the way, yelling at your kid and then yelling at your wife about the kid yelling at her, which is because when you walk through the door at night, you're hungry, um, tired, at least probably anxious that the house is going to be a fucking disaster. And then, of course, it is when you walk in and lonely because you probably haven't gotten laid, which could improve if you listen to how I tell your kid to, to, to talk to your kid about talking to your wife. Now, what do you do if you are trying to have a discussion like this with your kid and your wife is like, no, 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 stop. It's OK. It's OK. It's OK. Then you could turn to her. You say, OK, sweetheart, I'll talk to him later. Right? So what is that model? I listen to mom. I respect mom. Mom said, no, no, it's okay. I respect mom. In these situations, these are the opposite of the situations where guys are supposed to come up aggressive or assertive. 
I'm the first one to say, and I have podcasts, literally stop letting your kid treat you like trash, which you're stop letting your kid treat you like garbage. I want to give you the right word if you're searching for it. I have a post on that and a podcast on that. So the best case scenario would be if your wife listened to that one and then you listen to this one. But um, you can't make her do shit, right? Which you already know, or you would have a better love life. And uh, so you don't know if she's going to listen, but she might. And then she would be trying to assert herself and set boundaries while you are trying to tell the child, mom is a good mother to you. She is sensitive and patient. That is why she is sitting down and doing so much shit with you all the time. And you're not going to treat her bad anymore, you know? And so, and so what do you say if the kid still does it? You say the same shit because half of it, if not more, is for your wife. Then your wife is being treated differently because from your wife's perspective, the kids treat her like shit and then you look down on her too. She's may have or may not have. Many women, by the way, do make the connection that it's because of how you talk to her. That's how they talk to her. But some women don't and they just feel like victims because they were trained to be victims. So guess what? Their own mother was shy as a mouse too and didn't feel like she deserved much in the world. And the father may have talked down to her. And, um, you know, that's who taught her the aura of being a passive victim. Yes, it would be wonderful if she worked on this stuff in therapy and learned how to set boundaries with the children. But she's not going to get that from you, you know. The best thing that you can, you're not her therapist. The best thing that you could do is come in and model how to appreciate other personality types. Now, let me tell you a real eye opener. Most men marry passive women because this is the woman who let them pick the restaurant, laughed at their jokes, uh, listened to their endless stories, wasn't going to compete with them in various domains. And then why are you surprised when she's like that with the kids? That's why you liked her. That's part of why you liked her. She was so easy for you to be with. You were the alpha. Well, guess who else is the alpha? Your six-year-old son, your three-year-old daughter. They're all the alpha because she's not, you know, and you picked her in large part because she was not. She would not compete with you in that domain. She let you set the frame. So now she lets them set the frame. She's the same damn person. You know, you just never thought that she would be the same person. So if you wanted somebody who runs a tight ship, that may not have been somebody that you would have liked to date. That's the woman who picks the place where you're going to eat. She picks where you're going to vacation. She picks what you should wear to work. She has input on what you should do in your life. She is a hot knife through butter in her own career. It's totally different. So, and that can be a big epiphany too to men is the exact same reasons that you picked her sensitive, patient, loving, will listen to a story for 20 years, even though it's boring as shit, she's doing the same thing to your kids. So, you know, you may not have been as scintillating as you thought, and she listened to you with wide eyes, and so then she does the same when your kid talks about Minecraft for five hours, right? And so that's a benefit of a loving, patient person. That same person usually is not going to, you know, set a very strict frame for how to how to engage in the home. They're not going to be an excellent disciplinarian. They're not going to be as wonderful with scheduling because they're not super assertive, which is something that you, if you think about it, you may be the assertive one and she was not and this worked really well in your marriage. Well, don't punish her now or don't shame her for being the exact same person with the children. Instead, think about the benefits to them of having a mother who acts that way because you certainly saw the benefits to you of having a wife that acted that way. You know, and most of these women are more sensitive and they are less aggressive in general in ways that are very good for them, uh, allow them to be team players. They have a lot of friends. People like them. You like them. And if your wife hears you talk her up and talk about how you may be a different, she may be a different person from you and here's some benefits of that, then that is like really game changing. Because usually you've been telling her implicitly or explicitly that she should parent more like you. And that's very shaming. And that makes her feel bad. And here you're saying, wow, you got the patience of a saint. And you're telling your kid, appreciate this. My God, I couldn't sit with you, you being rude like this. Meanwhile, you're getting your homework done. Man, that's probably why you're doing well at school or at least why you're not doing as bad at school because she's sitting here with you every night. Wow, wow. Man, you should be grateful. And that's a very, very, very different frame. 
Because the truth is, is that people who are impatient and type A marry people who are more patient and type B. And if you are the man who comes home and criticizes like this and criticizes the way that she interacts with the children in the ways that I'm saying, in terms of too little discipline, too few boundaries, etc., then there were many positives to you of dating such a person and you even wanted to marry this person. And so... On the one hand, if you're the woman listening to this that struggles with this, definitely listen to my podcast on Stop Letting the Kids Treat You Like Garbage and think back about how you were treated as a kid and how you saw your own mother treated, right? And, and, and do you want your kids to really learn to talk bad to somebody? No. And do you want them to be assholes and narcissists? No. So therefore, you do have to work on asserting yourself. But if you are the man listening to this and the woman doesn't like listening to me, um, then, you know, and, and really this would not necessarily be the one to send to her, just literally do the shit that I'm telling you to do. Um, in that case, then she's not going to change or she's not going to change yet. But what you can help with is a different frame on who she is. So instead of conveying that she is weak and ineffectual, you're conveying that she is patient, loving, and kind. And that is a very, very different frame, one that she will appreciate and one that your children will remember that because your children, if you are in this dynamic, they look up to you as the one who knows everything in the, because you're more of the dynamic person. So you have the power to set the frame on how they think about the world. And a big part of their world is their mother and male-female relationships. So you can make them think, Daddy really appreciated mom. She was the soft one and he was more hard charging and that, that's how they worked versus dad was always disappointed by how weak my mother was. Do, which one do you want them to say in therapy in 10 years, right? And if you're like, well, this is bullshit because I actually am disappointed by how weak she is. Well, then get yourself into therapy. You picked her. You know, you picked her. Why? A lot of times men hate women for being weak because it amplifies and, and puts in a very obvious way that they can be a bully. If there was bullying that went on in your family growing up, right? That, and, and your father, let's say, made fun of your mother. Well, when your wife acts a certain way that reminds you of your mother subconsciously, you say stuff, not as bad as your dad. People do better in the next generation, but you may say some stuff that you're not too proud of. So then the shame hits you and very quickly you switch it around in your brain to that if she wasn't such a useless, weak person, you wouldn't have acted so mean in that moment which is exactly wrong and stops you from thinking about your tendency to have a mean streak. And almost anyone that was treated mean has a mean streak because that's how you were treated. That's how you were trained. And an abused animal bites. So anyway, I hope that this uh, was a ser you know, it's this serious topic and one that comes up a lot for parents. And I hope that it gave you some food for thought. And I will talk to you all soon. Have a great day, guys.